welcome. You're watching the NHRDN Summit on HR Shared Services and Technology on ET Now. Now, we all know that HR Shared Services is not a new concept, but it is in fact a relatively lesser known concept in India. Over the next half an hour, we will take you through the summit where panelists, delegates and HR representatives from across the country discussed the importance of the same. Take a look at the illustrious inaugural session of the third NHRDN Summit. Four or five years ago, there was not even a single program in India which was around shared services, not even one. So the first program in India happened three or four years ago. Before that, there was no such program. Uh, typically, the market size was almost negligible. There were hardly any service providers who were giving HR shared services, related services, or were even talking about it. If you remember, the total market size was negligible. Uh, Today, when we look at, there is a program happening, which is the third edition. There are about 200 people. There are 25 speakers which are coming from all over the country, uh, who's who in this field. And at that time, it was considered a very transactional uh, work or transactional role. And today, if you look at, it has become a part of the HR's strategic agenda. Any HR transformation which is taken up in India, it is very unlikely that shared services or HR technology will not be a part of it. Best part of this program, and we were again discussing that, you know, we get here a lot of people who are not, not the CHROs per se, but who are making CHROs successful. So you are the operating heads who are generally not visible. So this is the conference to celebrate people who make HR heads celebrate. So it is great to have each one of you in this audience, and I hope you will enjoy the program. And uh, without taking much further much time, and I'm going to request um, our first speaker, or I should say the keynote, uh, uh, you know, Nathan, to please come here and share his views, uh, and then I'm going to request the next speakers. So over to you, Nathan. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you so much. The demands that are being placed on human resources is, is very different from the ones that we have seen in the past. New businesses are coming in. We are looking at uh, older businesses are getting far more complex. Today's technology has turned the world completely upside down. And in all this, don't forget that India is being seen as an ocean of talent. And every organization from outside the world, global organizations, are all making a beeline here to India. And there's an expectation. But I'm just going to leave you with this thought. As much as we talk about the transformation that is happening in organizations, ask yourselves what transformation is going on within you. How can we be better professionals? How can we tell a story? A story that is so compelling that the person who comes up and says, I see what you do. All the fuzziness of the past is given birth to data driven analytics, and you can say this is exactly what we are doing. Thank you very much. So I'm going to request uh, uh, Rajiv to go next, and I call it the purest view. You've heard a practitioner, you will hear an academician, but in between the, uh, the purest view, uh, the way they look at the market, the way they look at the modeling of shared services and learnings. So over sure. to you, Rajiv. Sure. Thank you. Uh, while people have, uh, you know, uh, while there are trends of having, uh, you know, standalone HR shared services, but these are moving into integrated shared services. So people are finding that, uh, you know, so you initially probably had the HR somewhere separately, you had the finance somewhere separately, but then there were certain functions or so certain, you know, processes which required, you know, a handshake and a, and a you know, kind of a interaction between the two, and you found it uh, easier to, you know, bring them together. So that's something which is happening. There are also uh, also several work which is uh, which is high value, and of course, I think this is a you know hackneyed theme about HR analytics and so on, which is happening. But I think it's going a little beyond that, and the kind of capabilities which are required in this, the kind of profile of people who are joining the shared services, that is really changing quite a lot. And even if you look at things like reporting, you know, where does it report to? Where does the shared services report to? It's, it no longer goes into uh, maybe a mid-tier you know leader in the firm, but it's going right up to the top, and that is indicative of what is going on in some of these you know shared services. So I think we, with that, we come to the end of this, and uh, I'll hand over the baton to, uh, to Pankaj for the next speakers and so on. Thank you very, very much. Thanks.
Uh, now I'm going to go to the to the teacher, the guru, and uh, Dr. Jitender, and and I would love to hear and we all uh, your views on this subject. So over to you, Dr. Das. Thank you. Now, when I looked at this uh, shared services, uh, because I was here last year also, uh, you you know been you know you need to do a lot of research to figure out what this is all about. And what struck me in the beginning was that the moment you talk of uh, this as a shared service, uh, the fundamental meaning of this is that there is some function which is shared across different units in the uh, organization. Uh, the shared services was actually first quoted in a HR book uh, titled uh, HR Champions by an author called Ulrich. And in that, uh, he did talk of a lot of futuristic things as to how the HR function will change. And then that's how I started uh, picking up uh, things from there. So whenever you talk of uh, a centralization and in a way uh, uh, shared services, which will come to now, uh, this is a, why it was being done. Now, typically, these were done by the corporates. Now, corporates have one fundamental objective, to cut cost and maximize profit. So when you do these kinds of things, uh, the costs were being reduced. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Das. And we have um, Amit Stas uh, Rajesh Ranjan, who's the partner uh, and, and the global head for the business services vertical, especially flown in for this event here. So thank you very much, Rajesh. I request you to please join us here. While the global HR outsourcing market is around $30 billion, roughly 10% is Asia Pacific. When we, but when, when we look at the growth numbers, you know, the growth numbers in Asia Pacific is double of uh, what we are seeing globally. Uh, more importantly, if you peel the onion and look at the emerging markets within, uh, within uh, you know, APAC, that number goes up by four times, five times, right? So clearly there's a significant growth uh, that is taking place uh, in terms of how organizations are using HR outsourcing as a way to uh, you know, manage and deliver better HR services and quite frankly respond to business needs. The driver behind this adoption is quite different. So while in the West, you will see HR outsourcing as a primary tool to reduce cost in, in Asia Pacific, and more importantly, again, in the emerging market, we saw that as a tool to create a more agile and scalable HR delivery model, which can respond to the business demands quickly, and at the same time, improve, engage employee experience. Uh, so of course, in the Western model, since it was kind of uh, based on uh, cost reduction, so there are a lot of SLAs and KPIs which are based on efficiency metrics. But, you know, uh, in the emerging markets, what we are seeing is, you know, clearly it is also, you know, again, some of those things are being tracked, but, you know, a lot of emphasis is being given on what we call the business outcome. I'm going to hand over the mic um, for the last part, which is the word of thanks to our Director General Kamal Singh, uh, who's conceptualized this program. So over to you, Kamal. This is the new concept that is catching up in India. Globally, it has already caught up. And it is being viewed as one of the key differentiator or game changer as we move on to compete globally. With that thought, we had brought this entire design and summit, the way it has been put together, you see the best of the best speaker, the best of the best practitioner who have done it and who have really uh, made it as differentiator in their own companies. I can say with pride, Mr. Rajesh Tripathi, and, uh, and you will see as you move on, this concept will further grow as we progress. Uh, finally, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank each one of you for taking time out to uh, really uh, make the best out of the offering that NHRDN has given you and it is your presence and participation that tomorrow we will take a note that how summit it was. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Now who knew shared services had covered such a ground in our country? We will take a short break at this point but do come back to listen into leading HR professionals talking about implementing shared services in their companies. Welcome back, you're watching the Init RDN Summit on ET Now. 
Now, human resource management is one of the most important functions of an organization and HR shared services can definitely aid for a more efficient running of any company. In the next panel, leading HR professionals from some of India's biggest companies share their experiences on collaborating with shared service providers. The HR functions are not just to address employee needs about salaries and leaves. Human resource management works like a cog that enables smooth functioning of the corporate machinery. Shared services as a concept to aid that effort was discussed in this panel titled Experience and Collaboration with panelists emphasizing on the challenges that they faced while implementing the HR shared services model for their large companies. When we implement shared services, there is service for all employees and there is a platinum service for seniors. And very often we find that seniors in the organizations might have a buy-in to a change management initiative, but, you know, unlike leading from the top, are not willing to pick up the phone and talk to a shared service center, the call goes to somebody. In